The purpose of it is to inform or educate the audience. That would be a better primary purpose. And the secondary purpose could possibly be to educate the audience. So it's important to take note of what type of text you're talking about in order to identify the primary and secondary um, purpose. So generally, purposes are always to entertain, to persuade, to inform, to educate, and there are many more, but these are the main ones that you may consider. And the last thing that you should be including in the introductory paragraph, which is very important, is the thesis statement, something that tells you what is going to be coming after all of this. In both the fun they had, text one, and technology and education of future classroom, the title of text two, the author and filmmaker made excellent usage of stylistic devices such as figurative language and, cinemat uh, and cinematic techniques to portray education in the future. When they tell you to compare and contrast, generally they want you to compare and contrast the techniques used by the author and filmmaker in text one and text two. When it comes to text one, it's always a written piece. What you always analyze will be stylistic devices, figurative language. This will be the same no matter what text you go through, you encounter. And the same goes for text two. It'll always be cinematic techniques. These are already fixed. You already know these are the things that you have to analyze. Just that the conclusion you come to, which is the pro, which is in relation to the prompt, is different uh, according to what the prompt is, what the question wants you to analyze. So a sort of thesis statement, like this is very important. Actually, this same structure for a thesis statement can be followed. The only things that have to be changed, of course, is the title here. And, and this part in the end. This part is in connection to the prompt. You can basically just copy and paste the prompt down here. This, these things are the only things that have to be changed. Other than that, it's pretty much a good structure for a thesis statement that may be used. Moving on, we have body paragraph one. So in body paragraph one, we start with a sentence saying that. So in body paragraph one, it focuses on text one. That's one thing you should know for sure. It shouldn't talk about text two at all, just text one, because that's the bulk method. So we start in the fun they had, uh, Simon Pat wonderfully utilized literary devices, which is actually just another name for stylistic devices, because we don't want to use the same word over and over as it'll get repetitive to express the possibilities of education in the future. See, even this part to express the possibilities of education in the future is the same thing to portray education in the future. But we can't keep on writing the same thing over and over because we will talk about the prompt probably a lot of times throughout the entire essay. It's better to write it in different ways as it shows you. As it doesn't get repetitive, it shows better organization, it shows your more extensive vocabulary used within the essay. So it's best to write it in different ways whenever possible. This is just an introduction to body paragraph one. And the techniques that you analyze, the base, the best thing I can do is analyze two literary devices, not less, not more. If you less, if you go less than two, you'll score maximum a band level of five, which unless it's a very very, very good analysis, which most of the time is hard to do under a time limit. So just to be on the safe side, it's better to do two. If you have to time three, but most likely you won't. So it's best to stick to quality analysis for two literary devices. Okay, starting with the first literary device. For instance, the usage of symbolism. This is one type of literary device that you may consider. Symbolism to represent the theme Technological advancement can be witnessed in paragraph 11. So this is the same as the PEE model. The type of literary device used, symbolism, that's your point. In paragraph 11, that's your evidence. If it's a sentence, just take the sentence. But since I'm taking the entire paragraph, I just say paragraph 11. And I also write down what the line is. A man, how can a man be a teacher? In this society... In the situation, Margie represents the society in the future. So Margie symbolizes a society, one that's already adapted to this progression of technology and find what they have at the moment to be the norm. 
In the future, all students are homeschooled, taught by computerized teachers. Hence, with Marjorie's question, it can be determined that society in general believes men to not be smart and capable enough to fill in the position of the teacher, believed to be smart beyond what humankind could, to, could achieve. This represents how technology may have progressed over time, as in the current world, robots and computers are unable to apply the human qualities required to act as a teacher, while in Marge's world, it is a norm. This also represents how education changed in the future along with technology, where students have personalized, computer, personalized computerized homeschooling, preventing the benefits from the connections between students and teachers. Now, this actually this this explanation, any explanation that you provide, should always be in connection with the prompt. Never stray from the prompt. You want to show why this technique portray how this technique portrays education in the future from the author or filmmaker's perspective. So we already show that through this evidence, we show how technology, uh, how advanced technology is, and how that technology has changed education in Margie's world. And we're using symbolism for this as Mar Margie represents the society generally, what society at the time would believe. And of course, continuing from that, we have the effect on the audience. This may make the audience anxious, wondering if such development in the future is possible, as it may completely devoid students from significant relationships. And if you may recall, this evidence was something that was previously used in one of the analytical questions. So actually, it's very important to answer the questions as it gives you an idea. It actually allows you to take the idea and further elaborate on it. It saves you time. It saves you thinking. And generally, it makes it easier to write the question. And this is the second literary device that is discussed. Besides this, in paragraph 4, line 1 to 2, the evidence, the usage of antithesis can also be seen to represent technological advancement. This usage of antithesis, if you can recall, is the, what we answered in the second analytical question. So it's pretty much just a copy paste of the same answer. If you were to read through this, it's pretty much the same thing with extra information added here to provide more explanation, explanation and elaboration. But it's generally just the same thing where you provide the point, evidence, explanation in relation to the prompt, and finally, the effect on the audience. That's the main, that's the base, the main structure that you should follow. And why answering the previous analytical questions are so important, as you may be able to just copy and paste the answer depending on what the prompt is about. So always just check the prompt, don't copy paste the answer, as sometimes this may also not be possible. And moving on to body paragraph two, this talks about text two, which is the film. So once again, a sentence to introduce the paragraph. On the other hand, uh, transitional signal. Nemrov, which is the name of the filmmaker, and also applied cinematography to express how different education could be in the future. Once again, we see that I wrote the prompt in a different format because you don't want to be repeating the same thing over and over. And you see the usage of diegetic sound, same timestamp, change in tone, I just took the same point and used it because there's very limited time. And if the point applies, why not? You should just take it and move on to task two and task three because there's other stuff to do as well. This is basically the same explanation where the point is the change in tone. The, the, the point is the usage of diegetic sound that the cinematic technique used. The evidence is 0 0.55. And the explanation is, of course, in relation to the prop. It shows how education is portrayed in the future. And if you were to see from here, there is also, yes, here, the effect on the audience. This will make the audience rethink any thoughts they may have on the improvement in schooling that technology could bring. The audience will start to understand that technology is a double-edged sword and that if may not use appropriately, it may cause disaster. For analytical questions, there is no need to always include the effect on the audience, but for the compare and contrast essay, it is very important to include the effect on the audience for every point you make, in addition to using the PE, point evidence and explanation model. It'll make your answer much better and also tells you 
what to write. Rather than just making it more structured, it tells you what you have to include. So it makes it easier for you as well. And you can see even this one, I use the same type tab. I use the same shot. And I pretty much use the same explanation, except that I added another effect on the audience at the end. This may cause the audience to feel more appreciative of the current standardized educational system with teachers and students in one classroom, physical whiteboards, worksheets, and more, as it is unknown how long this duration will last for. So the format, regardless of what you're talking about, is always the same. You introduce your point, introduce your evidence, your explanation in relation to the prompt, effect on the audience. And most of the time, the examiner will give you a question that you will be able to use for the compare and contrast essay because that's the purpose of these questions. And that's the end of body paragraph two. And we're finally ending with the conclusion. In the conclusion, there's also a sort of a format that you should follow. You should start by sort of restating the thesis statement given in the introductory paragraph, which is um, here in both, from in both until in the future, you should be restating that in the conclusion, but in different terms, of course. And then after that, you should start to introduce why both texts are similar and why they're different. So you can see they're similar in the sense that they focus on portraying what education the future beholds but defer any techniques utilized to do so. Pretty much for majority of the time, this same answer can honestly be utilized. They are similar in the sense that they portray the prompt because we are analyzing from the perspective of the prompt. Of course, they will end up going to the same prompt. That's how they're similar. And the difference is obviously in the techniques that they use. A written form, a written piece of text cannot utilize cinematic techniques. That's very standard to films and anything that's visual. So of course the techniques will differ. This is a very standardized way of answering in which this answer will always apply no matter what type of text that you receive. So if we elaborate further, we can say it's a text where it utilizes figurative language such as symbolism and antithesis to express the prompt once again. On the other hand, text to utilize the cinematography such as diegetic sound and a toshar to express the prompt. Written in, different, uh, written in different format. And this is the similarity and differences that we show. And in order to make your conclusion stand out, to make it something that the examiner takes notice of, to make it more strong, one thing that you can also do is you can say which text you find did, be did a better job at portraying the, prompt, portraying the prompt. So basically throughout this entire thing, you've analyzed both of the text, you've analyzed the techniques used, You've done this and that. So you should come to a conclusion. Which text did it better? Personally, I believe that well, you should start by saying, of course, both texts did an excellent job at portraying the prompt. However, the uh, however, text one does it better, text two does it better, and always provide an explanation as to why. Personally, I believe that the author did a better job through the usage of literary devices. This is because the author made sure to provide portray what the society represented through Margie at the time thought of the technology in the past as well, allowing a pure contrast between the present and the future education because they also took out the book of school in the past. So it shows a better, clearer idea of the contrast between the future and past education. On the other hand, text through really didn't really do that. They just focused on the present, uh, the future. So it's a bit difficult to come up with that comparison. So this is another point that you include in the uh, uh, conclusion. And one other thing that you may include is that any insight that you gain through your analysis, that is, it is anything that you can write. What I wrote is that furthermore, an insight gain is that the possibility to uh, technology is limitless. There's, any, there's so many things that you could possibly do. And as long as the creative and innovative minds of humans are present, the current educational system will not remain stagnant. Hence, humans are the ones that have to preserve certain beneficial aspects of education and replace some of the um, improvable aspects with technology in order to shape education into something that all students will benefit from. This is something that well also concludes what the analysis is about. 
it shows that technology can do so much, but it also shows that there are certain negative aspects of letting this technology take over education. So I just kind of say that we can use technology for certain aspects of education, but we can also, as humans, we should also know that certain aspects of technology, such as having human teachers or classrooms, should really not be changed because there are many benefits of having a system as well. This is the sort of conclusion that you can give. And just as a summary, the things that you can include in the conclusion is that you have to restate the PC statement. You have to include what the similarities and differences between the texts are. You have to include which text you thought did a better job at portraying the prompt. And another thing that's pretty optional, but you can include it, is an insight that's gained from these texts personally. Now, before this video ends, I want to also break down criterion A and criterion B as strands itself. So you may be able to get a better insight of what the examiner will look at when uh, marking your answers. Starting with criterion A, which is from question one all the way to question five. This provides analysis of the content, context, language, structure, technique, or the style of text, or the effect of the creative choice on an audience. See, it was always, I was always emphasizing on the effect on the audience because it's something very important that the examiner will look at. And then analysis of all this is the technique that the author or the filmmaker uses, which is literary devices or cinematic techniques. Give opinions and ideas, which is all the explanation that you give is examples. Is you have to take examples directly from the text. You take either the the words that sentence is used, or you take the timestamp from the text. And of course, use proper terminology. One thing to remember is to use formal language. You can't use the word "I" because it's not about you. It's an analysis. It's an academic piece of writing. You're supposed to make it a formal piece of writing. So no slangs, no use of I, nothing that will make it informal or even semi-formal has to be formal. And compares and contrasts, makes connections and features across within genres and texts. This is mainly the final conclusion paragraph where you talk about the similarities and differences between the text. And finally, criterion B makes use of organizational structure, which is the block method. And the usage of transitional signals in general that serves the context and intention. Organizes opinions and ideas in a logical manner with ideas building onto each other. This is the main thing that's PE. It allows your ideas to build logically upon one another and seem more structural, which is why I keep on emphasizing on the usage of this model.